Hi, I'm Allison the Crocheter. And I'm Vivian the Knitter. And you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Hello, and welcome to episode 61 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. This is a knitting and crocheting podcast hosted by me and my mom, Vivian. I'm recording from my home here in Edinburgh. And I'm recording from my home here in Virginia. Hi, everyone. Thanks for thanks for joining us um, for our latest episode. Um, I think now is probably a good time for podcasts while people are self-isolating. We can keep you company while you're doing all the crafting in your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you, when you get to the bottom of Netflix, uh-huh. come listen to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. <laughs> yeah, as um, knitters, crocheters, crafters, at the very least, we have... We can occupy occupy ourselves very yeah, easily. Yeah, and in a hobby that is relaxing, except for when it's not, I guess. <laughs> but generally speaking, a therapeutic hobby. Yeah, so hopefully everybody is healthy and staying safe. And yeah. they can yeah. Yeah. jump right in. Yep, we can jump right in. Uh, so the BuzzFeed quiz is soup doop random. Um, <laughs> soup doop. <laughs> Everyone has a board game that matches their personality. Here is yours. But not not that everyone has a board game that matches your personality. It then specifies in the little subtitle, <laughs> are you Monopoly, Life, Candyland, or Clue? So everybody's personality matches one of these three, four really basic board games. Uh-huh. Uh, so which of the four are you? I got Candyland. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> your motto, life is sweet. You're always munching on something sweet, and you're pretty sweet yourself as far as personality goes. You don't like a lot of competition. You just you're just here for the cute colors and some fun. I think that's pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> as far as board games go, it's not you know not to say that it's a board game that I enjoy playing. <laughs> yeah. It just no, but like my the persona- personality. The personality, like yeah. yeah. Uh, so I got Clue. Mm. You love a good mystery. Figuring things out is your forte, and you're most excited when you're discovering how something ticks or solving who done it. I feel like my my description was not as good as your description. No, um, but you do like a good game of Clue because you like those logic puzzles and stuff. Yeah, I do like Clue. Um, that is true. <laughs> and I guess I feel like they could have rolled something in there about liking just to like learn things in general. I mean, they say like discovering how something ticks, but like. I feel like being academically inclined in general. That that would describe me. Uh, well, so the first question was, "What's your dream job?" Out of detective, actor, real estate, or candy maker. And now that I'm reading these out loud, I don't know what the, <laughs> the games are. They match pretty well, don't they? <laughs> Uh, well, I did not pick detective, but I'm just gonna guess that you picked candy maker. I did. <laughs> Hmm. Wait, what would actor be? Actor is um, life? life? No. One, two. And mo- I think Monopoly is real estate. Uh-huh. Clue is a detective. Candyland is candy maker. So that I would guess be actor would actor be life. life. Oh. I picked actor because out of those four, I don't know, that sounded like... That's just the one I picked. Although I was tempted by candy maker because the picture that they picked was of sour gummy worms. <laughs> I love you sour do. gummy worms. <laughs> you, you just like sour gummy candies. Uh, basically yeah, of, of all types yeah, that, yeah that's pretty true um pick a random image i picked the castle or whatever the yeah, I did is. Too. It, it basically looks like hogwarts yes it does like but f- like from the view from like the courtyard looking up <laughs> or something and uh, now that i'm looking at this again okay. <laughs> the, the the picture of the the money would be monopoly <laughs> the rainbow would be candyland the notepad would be clue detective Clue. Or, no, yeah, yeah, Clue, <laughs> which would mean, let's see, life is, is like the, the wild card. It's just like, pick any, <laughs> like, whoop, throw anything, and it's life, because it's part of life. Okay, what about candy? I mean, what about pick a cake, then? Okay, yeah, no, that's a hard. <laughs> okay, I picked the the chocolate cake with chocolate icing. So did I. Um, I think the, the pink, the pastel one would probably be, no, the candy, M&M's Candyland. one would be Candyland. Uh, I don't know. I I don't really need to analyze every single answer anymore. Um, I'm going to skip a few questions. What about pick a pet? The cat, of course. It's a cute cute cat. Me too. I mean, if it was a different dog, dog, I might have picked a different dog. The dog is pretty cute, but that cat, that face was so cute. I just had to pick him. It's just not the kind of dog I would pick. It's like a, what kind of dog is that? A Maltese, 
uh, Bichon Frise, some sort of white fluffy thing. <laughs> Not super fluffy, but like. Yeah. yeah, but they're very cute. That's a very cute dog. I definitely yeah, would I not just... have picked the fish. And a unicorn uh, floaty is not a pet. <laughs> yeah, no. They could have picked not. a, I don't know, like a I think that was Candyland. <laughs> uh, what about a drink? A shake, water, coffee, or soda? You picked a shake. Yes, I did. Uh, Candyland. I did uh, coffee. Mm. Um and that, yeah. Some of the questions were just a bit like the accessories. Your options were like these weird necklaces, a baseball cap, AirPods, AirPods. and an Apple Watch. Like, it just, it's a bit random. Like, it's very random. The, you, well, not that it's random, but I just feel like those particular options, it just makes me think that this isn't a quiz for me. <laughs> but I picked the AirPods. But you picked, but you picked the quiz. I know. <laughs> it's slim pickings out there. It is. Right, it so, is. I'm Clue, you're Candyland. Yep. Um, cool. Crafty content? Yes. What are your uh, wits? So, well, I guess I'll mention, because we'll still be running the Archive Cal until April 24th. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we both have whips that have to do with the Archive Cal. Um, so if anyone else is joining along, make sure to check out the Ravelry thread where we're chatting about our projects or tag your projects on Instagram, hashtag Archive Cal, that's K-C-A-L. So I thought I was going to have an F-O, but it's still a whip, just about. <laughs> but when you consider the last time we spoke, I was working on the third square, I think. Mm-hmm. This time, all my squares are done. Yay! Um, so that's 10 different squares. Um, and I used the paint box Erin yarn, which is just a acrylic yarn. And this... This is going to be a lap blanket that I'm going to donate to a, um, to a specific, like I think it's the McDonald's ward at some sort of hospital because they they uh, are requesting blankets to use as bed runners. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's in colors that I wouldn't normally pick for myself, but it, it looks nice. It I does. I had to look up. So it's it's in a it's like a mustard, a lime green, a raspberry a sort of vintage pink, a really light ballet pink, mm-hmm. and a cream. Mm-hmm. And seeing them all together, it made me think of the Wayfair logo. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree? Uh, he, he, yeah, a little bit. But then I actually <laughs> but looked not up as the Wayfair bright. logo. Not as bright, more muted, right? I don't know. So I looked up the Wayfair <laughs> logo, and the colors weren't really that similar. So I don't know if they've changed their colors in the last, like, whatever, or if I've just completely misremembered and yeah um so let's see what squares new squares have i done most of them so there's i really like this one it's um the swirly one it's got, yeah it's got like a spiral so you work sort of three different colors at the same time you have to like drop a loop and carry on to do a spiral mm-hmm. um hold on, let me see get the actual of everything so that one's called circles around by julie yeager Mm-hmm. But, I, but you have to do the, you do the spiral, but then you also do these four other circles that sort of get sit in each four corners of the square, mm-hmm. and it's all separated, like yeah. separate, and you have to and you just sew of, it in or crochet. It uh, in. you 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 work them in. So mm-hmm. w- once you finish the spiral, you change to the border color, and you do a row around it, and then in the next row, you chain, and then you pick up stitches in the little circle the satellite they call it mm-hmm. and uh, yeah and then you do have to sew one side of it in um so, but i didn't I, I like the spiral bit but i don't really like the rest of the square mm-hmm. uh what else there's this woven threads by april garwood and that's <laughs> i made a mistake uh so you literally you you uh crochet how many 10 different strips and mm-hmm. then you weave, weave you them weave in. them and then you crochet them into their woven places. But I mm-hmm. uh, I missed one. Oh, I see. So yep. one of the strips goes over to instead You're not gonna of fix over it? than under. I can't. It's all so <laughs> nib. Like, I literally didn't realize until I was doing the border for the whole blanket. <laughs> um, what else? I finished the Tunisian cables. Mm-hmm. And uh, what else? There's oh, the this... hearts are cute. 
yeah, the hearts are a tapestry crochet, except when I was looking at the pattern, the pattern booklet, I kept skimming it and I kept reading it as Tunisian crochet, mm. like color work, but it's, mm. it's just tapestry. Um, so what yeah, is it's just, just like what hearts is tapestry? in a spiral. Yeah, so just tapestry crochet. What does that mean, tapestry uh, crochet? Oh, so tapestry is when you hold, you crochet over the unused color. Uh, so, so mine mine is a mustard background with a pink, the red, the raspberry berry heart. So you work the mustard, mustard, and then you change to the pink. Mm-hmm. And as you're doing the pink, yeah, you just crochet over. The mustard. So you, so when you look at it, you can see the, the oh, pink, ins- yeah, sort uh, of inside the the yellow, and you can see the yellow inside the pink. But it, but from like a distance, it's fine. Like mm-hmm. it's fine. Uh, there's these like I don't know. There's, there's so many of them. I can't talk about them all. <laughs> the log, <laughs> the log cabin petals by Annette P- Pedivy. Uh-huh. Um, Which one is that one? I can't see. That's oh, the one. log cabin. Okay, log cabin. Yeah. So it's got uh-huh. like like a pinwheel and then. Middle, yeah, it's so. got like a sort of flower thing with uh-huh. in the middle that's sort of floating, uh-huh. and then a log cabin colors around the edge. Yep. Uh, the picture frame is just I don't know what you would call this. It's not like it's not like a granny square, but it's 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 a circle inside of a square though. It's that's a circle the... inside of a square, but it's like it's a block. It's a crochet block. Uh-huh. I don't you know it's it's got lots of all the rows are different to make a fancy thingy mm-hmm. um and what else talked about the lotus blossom over the double twist by drew emborski is really chunky it's really fat um it's like twisted front post whatever so it kind of creates like really chunky cables i guess mm-hmm. and that's in the i did that in the lime green uh circle star Circle star has a star in a circle, believe it or not. <laughs> it looks kind of like a starfish mm. rather than, I you know, a think geometric that's all star. Blocks. Uh, the only thing I would say is so it's a free pattern. You download the booklet um, and it gives, like, obviously, so all the blocks are done by a different designer. Mm-hmm. But I think the one thing that I would have appreciated is if there was more consistency within the blocks so each does like i think it's pretty clear that each designer has a different style of doing things so when i did the tunisian one not the tunisian the tapestry hearts at the end it says steam to block but Uh like i think that was the only one at least out of the 10 that i did that had that instruction but you could have applied that to more than that one so it, it obviously was just that that particular designer thought mm-hmm. to tell you to steam it mm-hmm. but other designers didn't but mm-hmm. then like the overall booklet doesn't have that sort of internal consistency mm-hmm. which is fine i think a project like this for a crocheter like me like i'm not a beginner crocheter um it was nice because there were times where i definitely made mistakes but i was confident enough i was like you know i'm just gonna keep going on a fudge it's fine mm-hmm. <laughs> like um and it's, it's yeah always, so it's, it's always good to to uh try new skills to techniques yeah no i think it was it was nice it was just something that i wouldn't normally do like Mm -hmm. these sort of block style crochet Mm -hmm. because you know i've been doing more like garments and stuff Mm -hmm. accessories rather Mm -hmm. than blankets Mm -hmm. um but it's also just not my style like i i just wouldn't have a blanket like this in my house because it's just but it's even granny. though it's yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna say even though they're not granny squares they're it's they're still granny ish yeah i think because it's or like i i don't want to say granny to in case you know other people <laughs> like this style i think it's just it has like you know sort of retro vintage vibes that just i'm not feeling uh-huh um but because i like i have a granny square blanket but yeah, i think do. there's just maybe it's a color thing as well i think it's different things uh and then the border so I, the reason i thought i was going to be done with this for today is because i started the border yesterday but it's actually i'm do, doing the border that they tell you to do because mm-hmm. it's pretty cool it's yeah like it's a, like a, a barber uh can barber pole or candy yeah cane. so it's like <laughs> twisted so it's like you do I think oh, four I different see. colors you actually do, yeah 
Yeah, so it's chains. Mm -hmm. So you have you're working all four at the same time. You single crochet two, chain nine, drop it, and then your next color, single crochet two, chain nine, drop it. And you keep doing that until you've done all four, and then you pick up the last the, the last one that you dropped and kind of twist it around the front. And yeah, so it creates a a really cool spiral stripe B sort of border, but it takes a while because you have to do all the chains and stuff. Um, so I'm only like halfway through that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it's pretty cool. Um, it looks good. And it's it's a very warm blanket because it's been on my lap while I've been doing that. And yeah, I've got plenty of yarn um, left over, but not in like in like weird quantities. I, I planned out like how many of each color I was going to do, but I seem to have a lot, a lot of green and a vintage pink left. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I had to change plans because originally I was going to do the block called Snow at Midnight. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it looks cool. It looks like a giant snowflake. Mm -hmm. But I honestly was this close to tears. Oh, really? <laughs> it's like, I did like six, no, like 10 rows. I mean, I was on like row 10, 10 or 11. And I just couldn't figure it out anymore. Oh, I, just I see. The one with the, uh, the dark back, black background in the yeah, light. Yeah, it's in a dark. Oh, yeah. Background. That one is very pretty. Um, so you're working the the white of the snowflake and mm -hmm. the, the the purple in the background separately. So you start with a purple circle, a small purple circle, mm -hmm. and then you chain a longest chain of white. Mm -hmm. And then you take the tail end of the chain and you weave it through the stitches of the circle. Okay. So that you then have white chains to work into. Does that okay. make any sense? It's, it's kind of complicated. So. But yeah, so then, I don't know, you, you, you work stitches and chains into the white chain in one row, and then in the next row, you, you're you working pretty much exclusively into the purple row, purple stitches, and then in the next row, you do some more things with the white, and then the purple is worked over the white, and it. I just, I, th I, I struggled to begin with, with the weaving. And then I figured it out. I'm like, oh, this is okay. And then it was all going fine. And then I just got through a 10. And it just was impossible. I tried it maybe three or four different times mm -hmm. over the course of two days. Like, put it down. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And, and, and yeah, you, you should have seen. I was just, like, squirming in my seat and, like, just pretty much shaking out on Sam because I couldn't figure it out. Uh, and then eventually I just decided it wasn't worth it anymore. So I decided <laughs> to do something different. And so... And I think which one I did instead. I think it was the circle star, the star one. I wasn't originally going to do. Yeah. So that's nearly done. It'll be an FO next time. Mm. Well, yeah, because you're just doing the border right now. Yeah, and then I have a lot of ends to weave in. Mm. So that'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have? Is that the only? Um... Pretty much. I've got. I'm working on some other things, but like my um, the denim shawl, but it's kind of same samey. Hmm. Well, my uh, archive cowl project, um, it's definitely bigger than it was last time. See? Mm-hmm. But I yeah. still have ways. Are you, like, halfway done? Yeah, about halfway done. So it still has a way to, ways to go. Maybe a little bit more than halfway because it's a, it's a snug cowl. But as I'm uh -huh. making this, I'm like, I don't know that I'll be able to wear this here. <laughs> You'll have to gift it. <laughs> I can't. This is, this is special yarn that Paola gave me. Oh, so you have to. It'll have to be like. So I have a holiday wardrobe uh -huh. where, like, basically it used to be my summer clothes, but now it's just like only clothes that I can wear if I go abroad because you can't you can't wear shorts here. <laughs> um, and so that'll be like your winter holiday wardrobe. <laughs> exactly. So there's that, and my cat cat again is coming along. And that is the Cadigan by Marna Gilligan, I think. Is that her name? Mm -hmm. And you can actually see the cats. Can you see my cats? Oh, yeah. So, and I, your cat. so right now I do have a black cat. Oh, you already done a black cat? I did a black cat. Oh, <laughs> can you see That's it? cute. Yeah. So I am, I am trying this new tech, new to me technique and... The designer um, had a link to it in her, in the pattern, and it's called, because, um, okay, first of all, 
when you're stranding, you usually want you don't you don't want to have like really really long floats, and mm-hmm. there's really long floats with the white because it's all white and then the, the white black of the cat. white of the cat and the background of of the the white black background of the cat. So uh, wait, 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 so the the black outline of the cat mm-hmm. is that what becomes a long float uh, behind the white? Yeah, behind the, the white. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So. Because the dark is so, so much darker than the white, and then sometimes if you like catch it twice in the cats, you you might end up with like little freckles that you can see in in the cat. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's this um, technique called Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart, get back it's here, like Stuart. Long oh long long floats via the Stuart. Method and then and the Stuart is S T U R A R T, and you can look that up. I don't have the link put up right now, but basically, instead of catching the float in the back, you are catching it in the front of the work, like but you're only doing one, so you'll do like at, at every and usually when when you're doing stranded, that you you try to catch your floats at at um different um stitches so it doesn't look like there's like a line of weird looking things through the front right Uh right? but this way you're catching it all in the middle stitch of the cat and then so then when you're done with one cat you're gonna have like this little black lines going all the way down so when you're done with that section it's very fussy you have to go back and and unravel all the white stitches huh yes you unravel just what the of the cat and then and then uh, and then and then um hook them back up and then now you're going to have these dangly bits of black in the back okay so you, you take a crochet hook and then you hook all of them together to make sort of like a chain and then and then mm. you you attach it back to that stitch and then you, and then you, you uh uh knit that together so i kind of ha- i kind of did that with the pink bits so you can see there's the little can you mm-hmm. see that little the weird looking chain right here yeah, uh huh. And I haven't done the black yet because I'm not done with that that section so of the cat. When you say you have to unravel the white, mm-hmm. does that do you do like a whole row? I don't understand. A whole, a whole like column. So you get to the middle of a cat, and then you would un, you would just uh, unravel uh, it. You just unravel uh, the stitches, like as if you dropped a stitch. Uh huh. You drop it all the way down, and then unhook like, and then push all the 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 the, the floats back Backs out back to the back back and then you, uh-huh. you and then you pick up pick the stitches back up put it back on the needle and the next and then when you're knitting it you knit them together in the back the the floats so you do you knit the float i i i, I got part of it and as a non-knitter who's never done color work i think that's good enough but <laughs> that does so you, oh god so it's very fast so how off yeah how, 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 how <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. <laughs> so basically, you have to do that with each cat. Like when you're done with the cat, you okay. have to do it with each cat. Mm-hmm. So I'm still a few, a couple rows, um, a couple rows. Uh, until so you I don't finish. have to do it like that. No, you, want to. you don't have to do it but like that. It'll just look better. It'll look better, and I wanted to try it. So, like I said, yeah. trying new new techniques. Yeah. So right now it's a little bit bunched up yeah. because of the the stitches. But then once you release the stitch, it's a stitch. The floats it kind of yeah. bounces back, it, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, what are you very interesting. At? Yeah, so there are a lot of cats. <laughs> 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 so that's only the first. The, the, I'm you know I'm only on the first tier of cats. cats. There's like three yeah. tiers, four tiers, something like that. Mm-hmm. So each tier of cats, I'm gonna have to do that. Yeah. So it took me like an hour to do the pinks, <laughs> and there's not as many stitches that are looped in the back. Uh huh. So, but I got the hang of it <laughs> towards the end. Uh-huh. So, so I think the pink is just from the that top of the. the yeah, chest. the pink is. Just and then the, after that, is there no more pink? There's no more pink. It's just it's just the white and black. White. And then. So will you still use that method for the black? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am because you can yeah. see the, the stitches hooked in front. Oh, I was wondering about that? that. I'm like, why do they have, they got like weird noses? <laughs> I see. No, those are my stitches that are looped in the front. Which will then be, okay. which will then be dropped. I and... see. Very complicated. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, it's not like I have anything better to do, right? Uh, <laughs> so I did go on a quick trip before before the craziness, before it got really crazy here. Mm-hmm. I went on a trip to um, to see your sister's show, which was ultimately canceled <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> because it got crazy while I was there, but I was able to make it back home. And because I knew that I was going to be on an airplane, I, I didn't want to work drag the cat, the cat again with me because there's because at that point I had three strands going and you should have seen me doing the three strands on the pearl side <laughs> like I had like one yarn you know on the coffee table another ball yarn on the side table and a third like on my lap just to keep them from tangling uh-huh. and then and then not only am I purling them but I'm also doing that weird loop thing. <laughs> So, oh wait, yeah, I forgot. You're doing. I'm doing it flat. You're doing it flat, but you're you're supposed to do it in it, the round. It's supposed to be steaked. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> so I was you like, really, was... you really set yourself a challenge here. <laughs> so I was like, Arr. so there were fireworks going off. <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> Remember when I was saying how it was a nice, relaxing hobby. <laughs> But I'm done with the three color part, so now from now on in, it's only two colors. So yeah. I was, um, I was doing a pearl side, yes, last night. I'm like, this is so easy. <laughs> doing the pearl, pearl side or on the pearl uh, side with, with only two colors going. So uh, I was like, uh, okay, I can do this, and, and I can do uh, pearl side color work very easily now. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> even with the that front loop thingy. <laughs> So now, now I'm finally, you know, enjoying it again. Now that um, mm-hmm. we're done with the th- three colors. So there's that. So anyway, back to um, traveling. So because I knew I was going to be traveling, I did not want to drag this with the three colors flying all over the place. So I started a new project and I have jumped on the fade bandwagon. I mean, you were about like three years late, right? <laughs> there are still people making fades. I was, I was surprised. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little bit behind the curve, but, you know, I usually don't like to knit something that everybody else is knitting. That's usually my thing. It's like, I don't want to knit that. So many people have that. <laughs> You're a Except for hipster of the knitting world. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, I found my fade, and I, I was looking at all the, my stash of just hand-dyed yarns, and I, yeah. and I was at the yarn store, and I ended up, bu- ended up buying, like, three more and I was like, only and only two two of the skeins are actually from my stash and one was a good, job. good job <laughs> gotta, gotta support those independent yarn stores right <laughs> so the first color you only need a little bit of it so I had that mini skein that Amy Florence gave me the, uh, the first time I went to uh EYF EYF yeah, mm-hmm. and she's stranded dye work. Yes, she's. Um, I don't know if there's if it even has a color name, a colorway name, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. so it's like all purplies and stuff. And so I started with that. So like I have to use that because that's just what I'm. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm using, and I, you know, you only need like 25 grams of it. <clears throat> and I still have. I actually use more than I. I I waited longer to fade it because okay. I'm only going to use five colors versus the seven colors and then you don't even uh-huh. use up all of the yarn so i'm like i'm gonna have, I have way too much left over if i fade it the way she calls so not uh, unless you use more from your stash and that or <laughs> yeah but the problem was like i couldn't the, the colors just weren't going i couldn't yeah, get yeah. it to go uh-huh. right so um so this so that's the the purple pointy part is the amy for the uh-huh. stranded dye works and then right now i'm on the second color and it is, I have it in the notes. Black Elephant? Yes, Black Elephant Merino Silk. And the color, wait, it's called Mastermind. I don't know why it's called Mastermind. But it's really pretty. It's got... Is it called Mastermind out of, for that, uh, wasn't there that, um, that movie? That animated movie? Was it animated? No. No, no, no. Uh, no. Uh, or he was the bad guy. Never mind. I don't know. It's a very nice color. So it's speckly. It's speckled. Purples it's got purples and turquoise, greens, pinks. Like everything. That's really everything. nice. Everything. Like oh, pastel. So that's my second color. The third color I'm using, which I'm not at yet, is Ching Fiber, which I, I, I mean, these, these colors I got at Dances with Wool. 
and it's it's more turquoise. Oh, let me take it out of my baggie. Um, the movie I was thinking about was Megamind. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's like blue purple. Uh huh. It's it's anyway. it's more greeny than the purple that you see in the the blue that you see in the uh-huh. in this the next monitor. one, the Ching fiber. Yeah, and uh-huh. the third one, which I haven't balled up yet, is from my personal stash, and I have no idea where I got this from. Maybe I got it at EIF. Uh-huh. But, uh huh. But yeah, you might have. But not not last year because I looked in my yeah. notes. Maybe the first year. Fibers a single though. Yeah, it's a singles. But I, I made a an exception because I really like the color because I usually don't like to, mm-hmm. to to get singles. So this so one that's got like this so is mostly like denim de- denim blues and a little bit of um mustard. Just tiny. Yeah, I was gonna bit. say it's, it's got that sort of like browny color that the, the other one that you the Ching fiber had a little bit of speckles. The brown. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So that's why I picked that one. So, but it's mostly blues. It's got greens and a little bit of pinks in it too. Mm-hmm. And then the fifth color that I'm I'm gonna do is also from Dances with Wool, and it's called Shirsty, no Shirsty Shirsty Cat. Mm-hmm. I thought I, at first I thought it was Thirsty Cat, but it's actually Shirsty Cat designs, uh-huh. and it's a limited edition. Mm-hmm. It's called First Crush, so that's like mostly magentas, pinks. So that's what that so far those are the colors. If I pick more colors. We'll see. Did, did you take a picture of them all together? I did. You want to see the pictures of it all together? In a, no, you showed me later. <laughs> <laughs> I did take just, a picture. Just checking before you started actually working on it and what? Scanning. Just just before you start had started working on it and everything. Yes, I, I I took a picture of so, but then there's like two extras up there that I haven't bought yet that I don't know if I will buy. If that was only if I if I wanted to do seven colors versus five colors. I see. Okay, so it's very blue... Blues and pinks. Blue, pinks, purple. Mm-hmm. But more on the pastel mm-hmm. side. Oh, and the, uh, the other thing is that I'm veering from the original pattern. It has you do a two-stitch co- two decrease where you, you slip one stitch, knit two together, and then you slip the stitch back, so then you decrease two stitches I didn't really like the way it looked Mm -hmm. and it looks it looked kind of messy to me and plus sometimes like when I wasn't paying attention like if my stitch dropper stitch marker dropped because you have a stitch marker that that marks where you have to start doing the decrease Uh um then I would like decrease at the wrong spot and you can't I couldn't really see it because it wasn't like this it didn't have a definitive like line where you can see the decreases. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can see that. And so I did a, a different decrease where you slip two stitches as if you're knitting, knit the third stitch, and then slip the other two stitches back. I don't know what the mm-hmm. I can't remember what the, what the um, the initial the the actual name is. But so you can see, can you see that? You can actually see like like a rib. Yeah. Uh huh. I can see like it. a spine or something. So mm-hmm. I'm doing it that way. So it'll look a little different from what the pattern calls for. But so far, this is what it looks like. Yeah, so I'm not fading as often because, you know, less colors. I'm, I want to yeah. use more of the yarn, too. Uh-huh. Nice. So that's that. And I have no FOs either. Do you have an FO? No. Well, I thought I was going to. But oh, I yeah, but you don't have an FO. <laughs> so that's all the all the knitting that I've been doing the last couple weeks. I have a yarny bits and bobs that I didn't share from last week because I oh, just had so many. <laughs> yeah, because I have one too. Uh, yeah, I went to uh, an exhibit at the university library, mm-hmm. so it's, it's closed now. I mean, the exhibit ended. I, I think I caught it on its last week, mm-hmm. but it was a touching stitches exhibit, and it was about there was this thing called the needlework development scheme. It was started in 1934. It, it was set up by uh, J.N.P. Coates, who produced Thread. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was set up in Scotland basically as a way to promote British embroidery and design. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, obviously, as makers of Thread, they were <laughs> invested in <laughs> British embroidery. Uh-huh. But I think they did it anonymously. They sponsored the program. but So basically, they would have... 
uh, samples of embroidery and different techniques made, which could be then used to teach from. Mm-hmm. So they they sent they sent sa- they would send samples to I think four different schools in Aberdeen, Dundee, Edinburgh, and Glasgow through the scheme. So I think teachers could sort of like apply for like oh I'm going to teach this method, and then um, they would get sent a collection of samples from mm-hmm. which they could teach. The scheme was dissolved at some point in the 60s, I think. And so they distributed all their samples to, they gave some to the schools, they gave some to the VNA and to the National Museum uh, in Scotland and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So the University in Edinburgh had some of these samples, but at some point they just got forgotten. And back in like 2011 or something, some students found it in like a wine cupboard or something. They just found all these like fabulous embroidered samples. Oh, really? they brought, they're like, <laughs> they, you know, like to the professor, it's like, well, I think we found something. Um, so this, uh, the professor, I can't, I can't remember what her name was, but so uh, she's been working on um, preserving the, the, the samples. Cause some of them were in a bit of a state. So I went to a guided tour of the exhibit and one of the other people who were, who was doing the tour, she was actually one of the students that helped do some of the initial uh, conservation. Mm-hmm. So she had some really, some cool insights about like, so some of, some of the bits were kind of tacked onto a piece of felt, which could then be rolled up mm-hmm. um, for storage. And so she was just talking about like coming up with that. And mm-hmm. there was this sort of Chinese child's hat thing so she was saying like there was a whole thing about how to make the the padded um insert to go inside the hat so the Mm -hmm. hat would stay open just like in terms of like what what you make that insert out of and how to shape it and all this sort of Mm -hmm. thing the exhibit was called touching stitches because uh part of the project was also to think about how they could present the the samples for the visually impaired because mm-hmm. obviously it needs to touch it. yeah you, yeah so i mean you can't just touch it that's the thing because <laughs> you know they're they're you know s- sort of historical samples and, uh-huh. and t- touching it would damage it and so they were doing things with 3d printing uh-huh. so they had different like 3d printed models that we could look at so they talked about like you know scanning them and and 3d printing them so there was a all sorts of things. There were these sort of like toys that were shaped as animals that were 3D printed that you could pick up. Uh, there was a glove, which they'd done in two different ways, where um, one was, I think, I don't know if it was the gloves, but there, there was one sample where one was a reductive, so, you know, that where you get a piece of pl- plastic or whatever it is that's mm-hmm. made out of, and then it's chipped away, and then one is um, additive, where you sort of think about 3D printing, and it's mm-hmm. uh, printed on top. Um and then just to like different magnifications, mm. so like you know one where the you can you could feel it it's really shallow and where you know, the the next one up where it's, it's I don't is, is zoomed in or yeah I, 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 I don't, the, the scale saying. the scale <laughs> yeah, was uh-huh. greater yeah uh-huh. um, and so obviously pe- pe- for people who actually who were visually impaired they liked the ones that had the bigger scale because it's easier to feel differences but then the other thing they did as well was. Uh, made samples, so uh-huh. made samples of the samples, so, so samples that you could touch, uh, but blown up, obviously. So um, just to, to so you could actually feel the stitches mm-hmm. um, on the sample because they've used a much bigger yarn or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was sort of some sort of collaboration where uh, I think they worked with a women's prison, um, oh. so there was prisoners who actually made the. Mm-hmm the touchable samples and there was one really interesting one uh, of animals and a woman who was on the tour group she flipped them over and she was like oh this one's much neater than this one like the backside Uh, Um, and then when you flip them back it was actually made by the same person so uh you could obviously tell like one was must have been one of her earlier attempts Uh, this one was she'd obviously gotten really good and and it's really neat on the backside uh um but yeah so it it was pretty interesting that's yeah that's pretty cool did you take pictures? Um, I just, I yeah, I took pictures. I've got lots of pictures I can share. Uh-huh. Um, one of the things that I liked was the sort of pamphlets that they would send you. So there was one on church embroidery, and it's just like a like an accordion sort of bit of cardboard with like you know a bit of 
uh, typed texts, uh, fabric samples, thread samples, and then like the actual embroidery samples. And I think that just really appeals to my data collection <laughs> side of things. Like just like to see, you know, like all the instructions all just like uh-huh. parceled up neatly together. Um, but... So I have a bit of Yoni Bits and Bobs too. Well, I was visiting visiting Emily in Florida, uh, and since mm-hmm. her show was canceled, uh, we're like, so what do we do now? So we decided to go look for a yarn shop. Mm-hmm. And this was definitely before they started down there um, social distancing because they were having a big group thingy going on. And we so we found this yarn store nearby, and I saw <laughs> – we walked out of the car, and I saw the, the shop logo – it's Sheep Thrills. They were we visited their booth in at Vogue Vogue Knitting in New York, and I actually bought the mm-hmm. yarn no needle case from them. So anyway, mm-hmm. um, here that's your logo. You'll probably recognize it. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't do that oh. much shopping with you. Well, anyway, that's their logo. So I I bought uh-huh. I did buy <laughs> more yarn because I was thinking. <laughs> Maybe I didn't have my my fade with me, so I was just off, you know off the top of my head, thinking maybe these yarns would go. Work. I haven't actually put them side by side mm-hmm. yet, but <laughs> they're actually very close to the yarn that I already have, so I'm, I'm gonna put it in. These are mini skeins, and it is sprout sprout sock minis, and one this this one color is called Calypso, and another is it dyed by the shop? No, it's not. I don't think so. Is it dye? I don't know. They they put a sticker on the thing, so I can't really see it. And this other <laughs> one is called Bubbly Toes. I really like the Bubbly Toes when I was, but they only had one skein of it. Let me see now. Put the sticker. Mm-hmm. It's very rainbow. Yeah, but it, on a turquoise background. But you know, I can use it for yeah. um, heels and whatever. I it, mm-hmm. I don't know what. I, I don't think the 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 yarn the store dyes it because it does say American wool. What did you say? The yarn was Sprout called? sock. Sprout. They because they slapped on their giant stick uh, price sticker on it. I can't see what's on it. Uh, fiber oh. seed. Is it ninety percent wool, ten percent nylon? It is indeed ninety percent washable merino wool, ten percent nylon. Mm-hmm. Oh, but this the the uh, Ravelry page for it spe- specifies that it's ninety percent USA oh, merino. Okay. Well, wool. it does say American wool on the thing in teeny teeny tiny tiny okay. little letters. Um, it was. Scoured in South Carolina, milled in Maine, and dyed oh, in Florida. Okay, so it is dyed in Florida. And this <laughs> one is not American. I don't think it is. No, this one is made in Turkey. It's called Merino Sock, and the company name is called Earth, U R T H. But it says, in partnership with Trees for the Future, each skein of earth yarns plants a tree in Africa. Planting trees not only prevents soil degradation but provides food marketable products and fuel wood for families increasing their income by 400 percent. so this is like oh helping families in africa and you get yarn <laughs> and so that's oh, yeah, oh that's a big, a big skein. skein this is just a regular um purple, purple and like and yeah charcoal and black that black's not very you no but the purple is well, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe it's it, the black. It really isn't black. It's just so purple. It looks black, like really, really. And it, it looks charcoal to me. Uh, yeah. No, we've we've had this conversation before about what it looks like on the. But it was only eighteen bucks for a hundred grams uh-huh. of hand dyed yarn. Uh-huh. So I'm like, oh, I can't pass that up. And so I bought this. So this would, I mean, it could go with my on my um, on my fade. Like I don't know, in the middle where it's still purple before it starts turning pink. We shall see. That's all I have for Yarny Bits and Bob. And I have absolutely no sh- shop talk because I haven't been sewing. Okay. Well, will we say goodbye then? So you can find the show notes for this episode and every episode on our website, which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com. Uh, follow us on Instagram at kcacypodcast. You can also follow my personal Instagram, which is Allison here or my mom's, which is upstate underscore viv. Make sure to subscribe and like and comment and thumbs up and heart and whatever on iTunes, on YouTube, wherever else you get your podcasts. And you can also join our Ravelry group at Keep Calm and Carry Yarn Podcasts. Just search for that in the group tab. So thanks for listening. And remember to keep calm and carry yarn. Mm-hmm.